<laughs> All right, so some 41s. Derek Wibley sells his publishing catalog to Harbor View this is pretty cool. Equity Partners. Okay, so when it comes to the sale of these artists' catalogs where they have hit songs, and we'll talk a little bit about what it was that was sold, we're, we're, we're talking about big numbers, okay? So Sum 41, for those of you who don't know, okay, sold 15 million records worldwide. They're a Grammy, Grammy Award uh, nominated band to Juno Awards. I mean, just done very well. And then Derek, of course, has had a very successful solo career. And so then you have a company, um, this equity company that comes in and they're going to purchase everything. So, and I don't remember reading if they disclosed the amount that was paid. They, they didn't say the, the, the amount of it. And I actually had to go back and look at uh, the Sum 41 ca catalog as far as like who's credited for the songwriting, because um, I know that, you know, sometimes a lot of bands, you know, it, it's credited as, you know, songs, all songs written by Sum 41 and they have a couple albums that are written like that. But the majority of songs are, are written by um, by Derek. So uh, they're, they're his songs. They're his songs to whatever. There's a there's a good majority of songs that he collaborated with their drummer. Um, but you know, yeah, he is, uh, Steve, Steve jocks, but he is a, um, he is the primary songwriter. So, yeah. So, I, I you know, the last, sure the last sale of, of publishing rights that we covered was Justin Timberlake and they had estimated that the sale was for around a hundred million. These are deals that I do. And so, um, you know, for something like the sale of his catalog, I mean, if it was anything shy of 50 million, I'd be surprised. We don't know. But, you know, this is something that's happening actually kind of behind the scenes. This is people are people are sleeping on the fact that companies are coming in because what these companies are realizing is that by buying the publishing and the masters and or the masters, OK, by having ownership of the music, they have a more stable investment than, let's say, investing in oil, right, or gold, right. because if the market crashes, right, the economy tanks, the value of these things go down. But the value of music stays pretty stable for hit songs because we have emotional ties to it. We're never going to not want to hear those songs and stream them or hear, have them placed in TV and film. So that's where and, and in why the 2000s. In 2000 films, I mean, some 41, I, I, I find you hard pressed to find a, a, a teen movie soundtrack that did not have some 41 in it. Um, I mean, <laughs> they have a lot of records. I mean, they have seven studio albums. We're talking all killer, no filler. Does it look infected? And my favorite record from some 41 Chuck, which was more of like when they kind of got into more of the metal stuff. Um, you're talking the songs all the blame into deep fat lip motivation, hell song. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite an impressive catalog and they are a really fun band live. If you've, if you've ever seen them, like I'm a fan of some 41, I think they're pretty cool. Yeah. No, uh, I went, really I went, cool I went back and these. their hits are undeniable. And, you know, I think that the lowest played song still was over 250 million on Spotify yeah. alone. So, you know, uh, congrats, to, congrats these... to him to kind of be at this point in his career to have these rights that he can sell. Very, very cool. And, the, and, you know, it's it's bought by Harborview, who just bought uh, Brad Paisley's uh, catalog, Lady A's and Hollywood Undead, which yeah. was another band that I was surprised to kind of see on there as, you know, selling their catalog because Hollywood Undead is kind of more of like a underground -y kind of band for sure. And so the fact that these bands are still selling, I wonder what some of those figures were, what some of these more mid to um you know just going under the radar kind of bands like what they're fetching for their catalogs it's very interesting and but it's very inspiring I can, to artists yeah i can tell you how we do the calculation right so how do we determine market value the market value is actually pretty easy we look at the revenue of the catalog and then we just do a multiple of um you know usually as low as 12 and for really popular bands and acts up to 20 up to 22. Um, so that's basically how they determine the number, right? The monthly revenue times a multiple of what I just kind of talked about. So I went to their website and because I had the same question for Hollywood Undead. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. So they go, uh, we are a badass collective of global investment guys with a lot of money focused on esoteric investment opportunities in the entertainment and media space. So that kind of uh, jumped out at me is because you know i just as they're focusing on are they wanting to have something that is kind of not more unique this is still mainstream's kind of songs but you know what i'm saying they're not going after mariah care 
they're not going after Britney Spears. They're not going after. Well, no. Right. Well, I mean, maybe they also don't have the money to do that. So instead of going for the biggest catalogs, they're going for more mid and they're trying to build things up. Maybe they have plans. Maybe they have plans for sync. Maybe they have plans for placement. Um, they're, okay. They're, they're, that's, you know. that's a good point. So here it's still on their website. They go up to one billion of investable capital. So the last company company that we were talking about was Hypnotic. So Hypnotic was Hypnotic. a company that Hypnosis. Was it, it hypnosis? hypnosis? Let me hypnosis? confirm right now. So I don't want I don't want to say it's wrong. I think it's but hypnosis. In any case, um, you know, they had purchased again Justin Timberlake's um catalog, but they had invested almost two billion dollars within the first two years. So I think you might be right that they just have a much larger budget. Hypnosis. Yeah. So Merck yeah. Mercuriatus, who's the founder of Hypnosis, and it like I was saying, it was about two billion dollars. And they acquired almost sixty thousand songs. So in any case, guys, if you're an artist, <laughs> I keep saying this, not just from the, hey, don't just be taken advantage of and give away your music when you're literally getting nothing from a record label. But keep in mind right. that later on, if you do have a song, just one, a song that becomes a hit, you can sell that for probably millions of dollars as time goes on. And this right. is something very popular to do. And think of the long game, right? So, you know, some 41, what did they come out in 2000? You know, 99, 2000. So it's like, this is what, 22 years later? So this is a long game. Like, you're not going to think of it like, oh, like, you're, you, it's, an inve it's an investment in yourself to make sure that you have your attorney look at your contracts to make sure that your ownership of your songs, that you're planning these things right because you're looking for 20, down, 20 years down the line. It's like an investment, like you would invest in like a stock or something that, or some kind of, uh, what do you call those, those IRAs or whatever that you're just kind of investing in and that you're, you know, that are going to mature later. Like, think of it like that. Like, it's great. Like, you're making your own gold. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, congrats. And uh, we love these stories about these nice big sales Absolutely. being made.